Am I audible? Am I audible, students? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Please mention in the chat box whether I am audible or not. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you for the response. <clears throat> Okay. So, uh, last class, we have done the, uh, discussed about the geological work of your atmosphere, right? Atmosphere we have done and the geological work of wind also we have done. So, today we will be discussing the geological work of water, okay? So, before uh, coming to the, you know, the works of uh, streams and rivers, so before coming to that, uh, before coming to the terminologies, so let me uh, first, uh, you know, uh, uh, tell something about the introduction part. So basically what happens is that our art, you know, it is uh, the surface of our art, it is basically uh, covered with almost, you can say, 70% of water. Okay, so 70% of water it is covered in the form of what? In the form of your streams or it can be uh, lakes or rivers or seas or oceans, okay? So we, uh, all these things, uh, it comprises of like 70% of the water it is comprising. Okay, so uh, this, you know, this water when it is in motion, okay? So when it is in a liquid form or it is in motion, so it like it proves to be the you know most important geological agent and uh, uh, that you know modifies the surface morphology. Okay, so uh, this is the you know background of your geological work of water. So water is it, it proves to be a most important geological agent of uh, this uh, surface in uh, modifying the surface morphology. Uh, so we have some uh, you know like uh, the running water. It is, you know, considered uh, as the most, again, powerful uh, agent, okay, of all these changes, okay. So, the running water is in motion. So, it is, you know, considered as the most powerful uh, uh, natural, you know, geological agent, you can say, geological agent of the change. So, what is happening here is that, you know, the small surface bodies uh, of water that is flowing in, in channels, okay, so these are known as your streams, or also you can say it, it is known as your streamlets, okay? So again, these streams, when they are flowing in a very big area, and they are, you know, ultimately they are joining uh, a single uh, channel, okay? A single channel, so, uh, and they, this take the shape of a river, okay? So ultimately river is formed by, you know, many small, small streams. So, what are actually the sources of stream water? So, there are, you know, three sources of stream water. So, uh, you know, uh, number one is a runoff. So, what is a runoff actually? You know, the uh, the part of the precipitation, okay, it, it is continuing, you know, like uh, flowing over and above the surface of the earth, you know, uh, through the channels, okay. So, this uh, term, this is termed as your runoff and, you know, it... Uh, makes a very big source of you know water for these streams and these 
reverse okay so uh, whatever part of precipitation it is flowing above the surface of the earth okay over and above the surface of the earth so that is your runoff okay then comes your sub surface water so uh, the, this part of this precipitation you know this is uh, somewhat you know some part of this precipitation it is absorbed by the soil and the rocks okay and then uh, after the soil voids are filled up so what happens is that this you know uh, uh, part of the precipitation it you know uh, you know uh, like uh, goes below the surface of the earth okay so some part of the precipitation it is absorbed by the soils and these rocks and the other part uh, it goes below the surface of the earth so whatever water has infiltrated into this um, earth okay it is known as your subsurface water okay then next is your uh, glacial melt water so this glacial melt water it is you can say a third source of water for these you know uh, uh, rivers and streams and ultimately it forms a glacier uh, these and these glaciers they you know undergo melting uh, some at some regular processes and also you know they melt at the top of during the summers also they top, uh, they melt so these these glacial melt waters they contribute a lot to the you know to the total volume of these mountainous streams okay so these three are the sources of your stream water so next is your how actually uh, what are the methods of your uh, geology uh, this river erosion so uh, this uh, the streams and these rivers as you know these are the most powerful you know sub aerial agents of this erosion so uh, the the you know running water this performs uh, its erosive work in some different different ways so these are like hydraulic action first one is hydraulic action then comes your cavitation then abrasion is there then attrition is there and corrosion is there like that okay so first one is your hydraulic action so hydraulic action you can say that it is the uh, loosening and this removal of the materials from the rocks okay these are the uh, these are, it is a mechanical process and it is the uh, loosening and uh, removal of the material from the rocks and this is uh, happening due to the pressure that is you know exerted by the running water so if the velocity is very high and the if the velocity is high then what will happen the pressure will also be high the pressure of this running water it will also be high and ultimately what will happen that it's the capacity to you know the move out the parts of the rock uh, it will also be very great okay so this is your about your hydraulic action so it is the you know loosening and removal of the materials uh, that is uh, uh, from the rocks and it is happening due to pressure that is exerted by this running water then comes your cavitation so cavitation you can uh, say that this is a type of uh, uh, it is a very rare type of hydraulic action that is performed by the uh, by this running water and it is uh, particularly observed you know where this river water it suddenly acquires some very uh, sudden high velocity it acquires uh, such as you know in case of a waterfall for example you can say in case of a waterfall where the water it suddenly uh, acquires a very high velocity okay suddenly it acquires a very high velocity so uh, again uh, if it is um, uh, suppose in other words you can say that there is a very you know spontaneous change uh in in case of uh, those situations thus there is a very spontaneous change from a liquid to either it from a liquid to a vapor state or again from back to a liquid state so these type of changes okay in uh it results in what it results in sucking out the material uh and thereby it is creating some holes and depressions uh you know in, uh, with the passage of time so that is your it is creating some you know depressions and these holes so this is known as your cavitation okay so next one is your abrasion so abrasion um you can say that uh, it is a uh, very you know the principal method of this uh, stream erosion and this is involving you know uh, the wearing away of uh, these bedrocks and also these uh, rocks okay and um, these bedrocks and rocks these are along the banks of a, a river 
and this where this is the wearing away of these rocks you know by this running water and with the help of what with the help of some sand grains or pebbles and gravels also you can say and these particles they are carried by uh, its load they, these are carried by it as a load okay so these particles you uh, or these grains or these fragments they are moving along with this water and these are so they, uh, known as like tools of erosion tools of erosion also you can say so uh, this is about your abrasion then comes your attrition so attrition also you can say that this is a somewhat kind of this this is the wear and tear of this load sediments okay being uh, transported by this natural agency okay through uh, like the process of some uh, collisions is happening when they are being carried so they are you know subjected to some collisions okay which they suffer during their transport so as a result of these collisions this wear and tear of this load sediments are happen okay so this is your uh, about your attrition then comes your last one is corrosion so corrosion basically it is a very uh, slow and a steady process of chemical uh, action of this stream water or especially you can say about the solvent and uh, it is uh, this uh, extent of corrosion you can uh, say that it depends upon the composition of the rocks and also on the composition of this where uh, flowing water so how much of corrosion will happen that that will depend upon the composition of rocks and also on the composition of the flowing water so this is about the methods of this river erosion so next comes uh, your uh, features of the stream erosion so what is happening is that you know uh, this uh, erosion if it is happening for a very long time okay so this prolonged erosion uh, by any this river or any of these associated streams so they produces you know many uh, important surface features and uh, also with the passage of time what happens uh, these form some you know geomorphic geomorphological landforms it forms okay so these are potholes river valleys these are some of the uh, geomorphological landforms also you can say or some of the surface features that, that are you know uh, happening due to the prolonged uh, this uh, stream erosion so these potholes basically potholes uh, you can say that these are you know very uh, different different various shaped depressions uh, these are kind of depressions of various shapes okay and of different dimensions so they are developed in the uh, river bed okay they are developed in the river bed by your uh, erosion of these streams and these potholes they can be of uh, any cylindrical or this can be of bowl type shape in outline and they can be of many uh, meters in diameters okay they can be of many meters so these uh, potholes they are commonly you know uh, formed in the uh, softer rocks they are they commonly they are occurring in the softer rocks you know occurring in the uh, at the critical location in a bedrock so this is about your potholes that comes your uh, river valleys so river valley uh, you can say that this valley it can be defined as some of uh, like of a low land that is surrounded on sides by some inclined hills and uh, or some in inclined slopes and mountains okay so it is a kind of a low land uh, surrounded by all those inclined hill slopes and these mountains so every river it is associated with a valley of its own okay and in fact these rivers are these are responsible for the uh, origin or these are responsible for the development or you can say modification of your valleys uh, through you know the process of this river erosion so this is about your uh, river valleys then comes your next one is your waterfalls so these waterfalls, uh, you, you can define it like uh, it, can, it is a, a jump, you can say. Okay, it is a magnificent, uh, it is a jump that is, you know, made by this river water at some specific parts of their course. And this is a very sudden and this it is a very, it is uh, causing some considerable drop in this gradient. Okay, there is a sudden and a very considerable drop in the gradient of the channel. So, this uh, in this waterfall what is happening the stream it literally falls from a very uh, considerable height 
okay before you know acquire before it acquires a normal flow at the lower level so it, it is falling from a very considerable high before it falls to a you know, lower level then uh, this velocity of this water at this point of fall it, it also increases tremendously and this height of this waterfall it is also greatly you know it is varying greatly to many meters you can you have obviously everyone has seen waterfalls so uh, this basically this waterfalls you can define it is uh, defined it as your some magnificent jumps that this stream or these rivers are making at specific parts of their uh, course okay then comes your uh, stream terraces so this stream terraces you can define it suppose it's uh, like a very uh, uh, suppose a bench like a bench like surfaces that occurs on the uh, these uh, sides of many river valleys okay so these are the type of some bench like surfaces so they are occurring in the sides of these river valleys and if you see from a very uh, uh, distance okay far distance then they will appear like you know several steps of these big natural staircases okay rising uh, from this river bank so these um, uh, stream terraces they can be made up of this hard rock or also or soft rock also but uh, the uh, uh, main thing is that they do they look like steps okay so that is your stream terraces now uh, coming to your river meandering so river meandering uh, you can say that this is like when a stream it like flows along a very curved or zigzag path uh, and that acquires a loop shaped course okay so it is a uh, say to meander so it is this uh, river when it you have everybody in you have seen a river so it flows the stream it flows like a very curved zigzag or uh, this uh, loop shaped course so it is known as your meander and this um, process of this, uh, you know, development of this zigzag type of channel, it is known as your uh, river meandering. So these meanders, these are, you know, these are developed uh, mostly in the, you can say, in the middle and this lower reaches of these uh, major streams, okay, where these uh, uh, erosion, the lateral erosions and these depositions are happening. Okay, so this is uh, basically you will remember this meander as like uh, it is a curved uh, or a zigzag path. This is acquiring a loop shaped course. Okay, so it is uh, this stream, it is flowing in a zigzag path. So that's the process of the, uh, you know, like uh, the process of this development of this zigzag path type of channel, it is known as your river meander. Okay, so this was about your geological work of water so next we come to the uh, next we come to the structural features of rocks so structural features of rocks before that let me give you the um, attendance link okay you can fill it up in them Okay, I hope everyone has got the link in the chat box. Till then, you please uh, fill up this uh, link for your attendance. Okay, so now coming to the structural features of rock so the geological work uh, part working part is finished for your uh, water wind and your atmosphere okay so now coming to the structural features of rocks so before coming to the terminologies you know these rocks these are uh, which are formed uh, either on the surface of the earth or within the surface of the earth they are subjected to you know numerous uh, internal and external forces where this might be either during their formation or either after their formation okay so these these rocks are 
uh, every day these are you know subjected to a large number of these external or internal forces so the interaction of these forces with the rocks it is you know responsible for a uh, a variety of characters that is developed in this rocks so like uh, you can uh, it is like a common observation that these rocks they exhibit everywhere you know different type of characters or you can say features or this disposition so either in case uh, this in the case of this rocks uh, in some cases what is happening that these rocks they can occur either in the form of some layers okay uh, layers which are you know spread over some considerable areas and it can be either horizontal also it can be either inclined also at some different different angles again in uh, different cases you can say that that the disposition that is your the horizontal and the inclined uh, rocks it is also another type of structural feature and in some other cases also of rock bodies what is happening where the rock bodies can be either horizontal or inclined or it can be either you know if it is bending or it is fracturing or it is showing some displacement of blocks so all these are uh, you know if you group together all these things so these are known as your structural features of your rock okay so uh, if i say that what is a structural geology then you can say that the you know branch of geology that deals with the uh, morphology or the classification or the mechanism uh, and uh, this uh, just a minute no longer accepting responses is the form on it is not accepting responses or what are you able to give the attendance yes, me, it's okay right so this student he is saying that yes yes your attendances are coming okay so uh so uh, i was talking about the structural geology so this structural geology you can define it as suppose it is the branch of geology that deals with the morphology or this classification or this mechanism and the you know what are the causes of this development of this rock structure so all this dealing with this things it is known as your structural geology now coming to some of the terminologies that we have to know while studying the uh, you know structural features of this rock so number one is uh, is known as uh, it is known as outcrop so what is outcrop actually the solid rocks you know these are uh, not exposed everywhere on the surface of the earth so these are mostly these solid rocks are mostly covered with a very thick or a very thin type of uh, loose deposit which is known as or soil okay so in, in in some areas what is happening the soil it may be spread over uh, many many kilometers and this bedrock it may it may not be visible uh, anyhow okay so in these areas so uh, however in these mountains and in these sub mountainous regions so these exposures of rocks it can be seen easily and it can be forming at the sides of the valleys of these hills so outcrop in general you can define as like it is a exposure of a solid rock on the surface of the earth okay so next one is your bedding or stratification so like uh, you know most of the sedimentary rocks uh, these are deposited under conditions which are you know which favor development of some distinct layers these are piled up one above the another so from uh, these are these are you know distinct these are piled up from one above the other from top to bottom also these are piled up so these layers these are called beds and or also you can say these are called as strata or stratum also you can say and these are quite often uh, distinguishable uh, like you can distinguish it on the basis of color or composition or your grain size so this layered character it is called your bedding or stratification and also it is one of the most uh, you know fundamental structures of this sedimentary rocks 
Okay, then another term comes under this bedding or stratification that is your lamination. So this lamination, it is a very uh, similar term related to stratification. So um, it means that, uh, you know, these are extremely fine, fine grain sedimentary rocks, uh, which are made up of clay or silt. And they are, you know, they have different layers and these layers are very thin. And so, so much thin that it is like a, it is paper thin, okay, like a paper. So it is thin like that. So this is known as your lamination. So next comes your deep and strike. Okay, deep and strike. So while you know studying rocks, we generally speak about the attitude of rocks or, or their outcrop. Okay, so this attitude is it is simply you know uh, uh, known as their you know disposition in this space or the way in which they are exposed at a place. So and also you, you which can be you know it can be expressed in some geographic terms also it can be expressed. So this deep and strike, so these are, you know, two basic quantities uh, which are used to express the uh, altitude of any rock body, okay? And uh, the deep, it is, you know, defined as the, uh, it is defined as the angle of inclination of a layer of rock with the horizontal. So uh, this one, it is expressed both in terms of degree of inclination also and also in the direction of inclination also, okay? So in this, uh, in this, uh, your uh, picture, you can see this is a type of a rock body. So here, this is the direction of your deep, okay? So and strike on the other hand, this strike, it is a geographic direction okay, in which uh, this line of intersection of a horizontal plane with a bedding plane of a layer rock. So this strike, it is the opposite to the deep direction, okay. So this is a strike direction. You can see this is a strike direction and this is a deep direction, okay. And this strike and deep, they are always perpendicular to each other on the map. So next is your like, this, what are the different types of uh, dips, okay? So, there are two types of dips. So, that is your apparent and true dip, okay? Not, this one is also a type of dip and another type of dips are also there. So, the first one, the important one is your apparent and true dip. So, this apparent dip, we can say that uh, like when the dip of a, a layer, it is, you know, measured in the direction that is essentially at right angles to the strike of that particular layer. So it is called your true deep. So this true deep, it is your, you know, the deep layer or the deep of this layer, this is in a direction at right angles to that of the strike layer, okay? And this, uh, your, the uh, what is the apparent deep? So the deep of this layer, when it is measured in any other direction, and which is not at right angles, that, that is known as your apparent dip, okay? And this true dip and apparent dip, it has a following relation, which is your 10 alpha is equal to 10 beta into cos gamma. So where alpha, it is your apparent dip angle, beta is your angle of true dip, and gamma is your angle between the strike and the direction in which the apparent dip is measured. So uh, this is about your apparent and your true dip. Now coming to the types of dip, so that is your, uh, you know, it can be this dip, it can be measured over a very large area and it may be of uh, any original feature. So these are again distinguished into the following uh, types. So that is your primary dip, secondary dip, local dip and regional dip, okay? So primary dip, it is like when these sedimentary rocks, uh, these are deposited in a uh, sloping basin, Okay, they are inclined also in the same fashion. So if uh, if this original slope of the basin, it is, you know, between 5 to 10 degrees, uh, 10 degrees, then this sedimentary formations accumulating over there. So uh, uh, over this period of time, so it is, it will also have the same disposition. So such dips are, you know, called as your primary dips. So next is your secondary dip. So secondary dip is like if the inclination angle, uh, you know, uh, induced in the strata, 
after its deposition due to the tectonic forces uh, to which strata have been subsequently subjected. So, what is happening here is that secondary dips they may you know range in value up to some vertical. So, in fact, you know such forces it may even cause this overturning and inversion of this strata. Okay, so this secondary dip. It is basically, it is the inclination that is, you know, in the strata that is after the disposition due to all these tectonic forces. So, next is your local and this regional dip. So, local dips are inclinations of the rocks exposed in a limited area of observation. So, this local dip and regional dip are uh, just opposite to each other. So, this local dips, these are inclinations of these rocks that are only in a very limited area of observation. And this regional dip, it is just the opposite that it is an uh, you know, inclination of a series of formations and these are over a widespread area. Okay. So, this is about your types of dips. Then comes your, okay, uh, outcrop dimension okay then comes your outcrop dimension that is this outcrop dimensions outcrop we have studied so dimensions means we have to study about we have to know about the width or the thickness or the depth okay so uh, this uh, width of this or the width or this breadth of this outcrop it is you know given by the distance between the top and bottom edges of the bed okay the distance the distance between this top and the bottom edges of the bed it is uh, measured on the surface of the ground in a, uh, in a, you have to keep the direction in a perpendicular to strike of that particular bed. Okay, so that is your uh, thickness, or sorry, that is your width. Okay, next is your thickness. So thickness, is, it is, you can say that it is of a uh, perpendicular distance. It is a perpendicular distance between the, you know, top and bottom surface of this same layer. Okay, so for, for the same layer of rock, the perpendicular, which is the perpendicular distance between the top and the bottom surface. So that is your uh, uh, thickness and depth. Depth it is, you can say it is a, you know, uh, it, it is at any place from the surface and it is, you know, believed to be, it is given by the uh, perpendicular distance between the ground surface and the top surface of the particular layer. So it is a perpendicular distance between the ground surface and the top surface of the particular layer. So there is also a, uh, you know, uh, this uh, relation between the depth of this bedrock and uh, about this, uh, you know, angle of this true deep. So this, uh, this is the formula you can see that D is equal to AC into 10 B. So where, you know, this, uh, uh, this D, D is the angle of this true dip, okay? And B, it is, and C, it is a distance from the exposure to the place C. Okay, so you remember, uh, you can remember this formula, the outcrop dimension, thickness, width, and depth relation, okay? So next comes your uh, one part, that is your fold and folding. So this folds, okay, these, you can say that these are, you know, defined, uh, you can define it as the undulations or the bands or also the curvatures it is a, that are developed in the, you know, rocks of the crust of the earth, okay? So, you can see in the picture, so these are kind of a very undulations or the bands or these curvatures that are forming on the surface of the rock, okay? So, uh, and these uh, falls, these are, you know, happening at the deep underground where the rocks are under very pressure and temperatures are very high okay so this is the picture of a fold so and the process of you know development of folds it is uh, known as your folding so next is you know what are the parts of a fold so these um, parts are like there are limbs or hinge okay then again there are axial surface axis of fold plunge of fold okay so there are many so limbs you can say that these are sides of a fold basic in simple words you can say the limbs are the sides of a fold then hinge you can say that it is a point of where you know like um, the curvature is maximum and then one limb it ends and the other limb it starts from that point so that point is known as your hinge point and um, if if i say a hinge line then when this rock it occurs in a you know sequence way and there all the hinge points, they are joined together. 
so that is known as your hinge line okay and axial surface and axial plane these are like axial for sur surface is uh, like it is a stack of folds that are passes through this hinge line and they mostly they they are nearly you know divide the folds into equal parts okay that is your axial part and if the axial surface it is not curved then it is known as your axial plane so next is your axis of fold so axis of the fold it is the intersection of the axial plane with one of the strata of which the fold is composed then comes your uh, plunge of the fold so plunge of the fold uh, you can define it as the angle of this inclination of the fold axis uh, with the horizontal as measured in a vertical plane that is your plunge of a fold then your next one is your crest and trough so crest uh, you know these folds they are of many variations and they can be of two forms that is your one can be at the up arched and the next one it has a downward bend okay so the line that is running through these higher highest points in an up arched fold it is known as your crest and the lower one is known as your trough okay so this upper one it is known as your uh, crest and the lower one is known as your trough okay so next comes your classification of folds i don't think uh, there will be time for discussing this the meeting will end in two to three minutes okay let me complete till where i can okay uh, till then you please fill up the attendance form okay so classification of forms uh, so folds so there are two kinds of uh, classification of folds uh, the number one is your anticlines and the next one is your synclines so these anticlines you can de uh, define it as the strata that are arched okay that is they are convex upwards so uh, the you know here the leaves they are uh, they dip away from each other at the crest okay and syncline is just the opposite or the reverse that this is the strata that are down arched and these are convex downwards and the leaves they dip towards the common center so in this diagram you can see these are anticlines and these are synclines okay that downward part is your synclines next is your uh, symmetrical uh, the, on the basis of your position of these axial planes also these folds can be divided into many kinds so number one is your symmetrical folds so the symmetrical folds is one in which the axial plane is vertical okay and 